Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Ant reynolds Lanay, and I'm a senior writer on the world building team. Hi there, I'm Maisie and I'm a concept artist on the world building team. And today we're going to be talking a little about Noxus. Noxus is a massive, massive expansionist, aggressive empire. It's um, constantly moving its borders out. It's actually one of the biggest empires in Runeterra, as well as one of the oldest. But it's also one of the most culturally inclusive places. They're, they're constantly bringing more people into the empire, which to them adds strength to the empire. Traditionally, Noxus has always been portrayed as the bad guys or the evil faction. So today we'd like to take a closer look at them and to dive into some of the nuances and details that make up the empire. Noxus is situated on land that's very arid and devoid of resources, which makes it hard for them to grow any crops. And because it's so hard for them to sustain themselves, they've taken to expanding outwards and conquering other nations. So at the heart of Noxus, the capital, is actually built around an ancient fortress called the Immortal Bastion. So the Immortal Bastion was actually a castle that was built by Mordekaiser way, way, way in the past. He was a tyrant and all these different barbarian tribes that lived in the area actually combined their forces to overthrow him. And once they finally overthrew him, they took the Immortal Bastion as their own and that is what started the Noxian Empire. So Noxus is truly huge. It's expanded in all sorts of different areas. So in the north, it's, it's expanded up towards the Freljord, pushing into the Freljord up there. Uh, in the south, it's pushed into Shrima. It's actually taken over a whole bunch of the northern Shreman cities. It hasn't taken on Piltover or Zorn yet. It, it's neutral with those guys. It uses that as a trade port, but you can tell that in the future they might be taking a bit more interest there. To the east, uh, they had an attack against Ionia, but that did not go so well. But you know it's only a matter of time before they try and push their border back out that way. So Noxus doesn't always conquer their territories violently. In many cases, some of these cities tend to want to bend the knee to Noxus because they get great benefits in trade and protection. As an example of assimilation, here's one of a northern Shuriman harbor where Noxians have, instead of taking over the city, uh, set up this port of call and enclave where they've started to live amongst the locals and take on some of their customs. The governor of this harbor has taken to wearing Shuriman clothing, even though he's from Noxus, in order to gain favor with the locals. Noxians value strength over all else. Primarily, this is martial and physical strength, although Noxians acknowledge strength in all its different forms. So if you're a very successful trader, or if you're politically inclined, you too can find great success in Noxus. Noxus's view on strength is exemplified by a notion that they call the trifarics. The trifarics, otherwise known as the principles of strength, are the three aspects of strength that they've identified which they believe that Noxus needs to be strong in all of these areas. Um, and those three areas are might, vision, and guile. Their idea is that they need to be strong in all of these, and if they're weak in one area, it can actually bring the whole of Noxus down. So the Trifarix is also the name given to the tri-leadership of Noxus. This was an idea that Swain has brought in. Rather than having a singular emperor, Noxus is actually led by three leaders, um, one each who represents one of those principles of strength. So you've got Swain who represents vision, you've got Darius who represents might, who is the leader of the military side of things, and an unnamed sort of faceless figure who represents guile. Now, one of the ideas with, with this concept is that a single emperor can always be fallible and could bring Noxus down. But if you've got three leaders there, they can each hold each other more accountable. Noxus is a faction rife with symbology, and so the Trifarix is very commonly represented throughout the empire. One of these instances is through the Noxian crest. If we look at the Noxian crest, the eyes represent vision, the pillars at the bottom represent might, and the blades represent guile. Within the empire, the Trifarix is also represented by its architecture, such as this Noxian tower, which shows the three pillars of strength. In much of Noxus, people tend to build homes and structures that are imposing and commanding to reflect their belief in the principle of might. When Noxus goes to war, it's very different than a place like Damasia going to war. Damasia is very uniform, very regimented. Noxus is very different from that. It's not chaos, but the, they see strength in all the variety and diversity of the different ways its warbands fight. War Masons are a distinct branch of the Noxian military, and they scout ahead and are responsible for engineering feats such as bridges, structures, anything that the Noxian army might need to expand outwards. Of all the warbands, the Trifarian Legion is the most elite and the most feared. It's led by Darius himself, and they're so named to reflect the core principles of Noxus. Many warriors from the other warbands would give an arm and a leg to be part of this legion. 
Aside from having a really large army, Noxus is also very open to experimenting with new things and constantly adapting and changing as new ideas and people flood into the empire. So one of the new technologies that Noxus is experimenting with are black powder weapons. And they've also been taking an interest in Piltover and Zaun due to the high levels of technology found there. Magic is also just regarded as just another powerful tool in their arsenal. So it's the kind of thing that they would be looking for different mages to bring into Noxus to hone their powers for the betterment and strength of Noxus. It's the kind of place where they might embrace things that other cultures might have a few more taboos around. Uh, as an example of that is like bringing Sion back. They would just see this as a great thing for Noxus because he's this powerful warlord. Other people might be like, I don't know if you should be doing that. Noxus also makes use of a lot of creatures throughout the empire, whether it's in their war efforts or in their civilian life. So for example, they might have living battering rams or beasts of burden that pull their war machines. And in daily life, they might have a drake hound, especially if they're rich and noble, as a display of wealth and power. We hope you guys enjoyed this look into Noxus, and if you'd like to know more, we have new art and new bios on Universe, so please check it out. Thanks for watching. Thank you.